Yeah. We are live, Julia. Oh, great. Julia Murat. Oh, great. So how are you doing today, Julia? Quite sick, but let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. Uh, we have to do an introduction for the people who are joining. Uh, I hope uh, uh, people are there. People uh, usually don't expect the webinar to start on dot on live, uh, since nowadays so much hiccup happens. But uh, luckily, we started on time. So let's uh, uh, get to the live. Uh, dear audience, uh, whoever is following us, I'm. Uh, 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 I'm Kamar, Kamar Ahmed Simon from Bangladesh, presenting this discourse for Berlinale Spotlight World Series of Arms Film Series. This is the second edition of the discourse. Uh, I'm very excited to uh, be connected with the like-minded filmmakers from different parts of the world. Uh, and today my guest is Julia Murat from Brazil. Before I carry on with you, Julia, I must uh, actually acknowledge a few friends who have uh, really put an effort to make this possible. Starting with Vincenzo Bugno uh, from WCF, you, you may also already know, and Sarah Flynn from Bangladesh, who both curated this whole series, this bundle out of hundreds of films they picked up for, for the four months. So this is the second of the series. And Gothe Institute, of course, uh, for uh, sponsoring this program, um, uh, taking this initiative uh, with their partner organizations from Sri Lanka, Pakistan, and uh, India and Bangladesh. So this program is live in four countries altogether in different cities of these four countries. And um, anyone who can, um, who want to watch the last edition, uh, they can check out our uh, uh, chat, uh, um, uh, chat box where there are some links are given. And uh, also there are some useful links about Julia and me uh, and about this program are already there. So whoever is joining now, they can check the uh, chat box links uh, for further details. So starting with Julia, uh, Julia, um, I have to do some introduction of you, so don't be embarrassed. You, you are a, a Brazilian director, editor, screenwriter, um, whose film has racked up uh, an impressive 19 film festival wins, as far as I checked, and um, 10 nominations it already got. And um, I, I read a very interesting line in the New York Times. Uh, it is uh, they wrote about you and or an obtrusive observer with a strong and confident visual sense. So Julia, uh, your earliest effort, uh, you started with shorts, uh, experimental videos, uh, television commercials before breaking out with the feature length documentary Father's Day uh, in 2008, am I right? Okay, yes. and uh, uh, you but had I actually this... started uh, in cinema since 1906. Wow, how yeah. old were you then? 16. Okay, lucky you. You started quite really early, which is really for me. But it I was have too to late. say that my mom, my mom, my mom is a filmmaker, so it makes things okay. easier. Okay, okay, yes. well, lucky you, lucky you. But uh, it's not actually your like I don't, I don't know, but you already put your own mark. Uh, your uh, uh, festival was uh, awarded in. Um, uh, was premiered in Venice and also won several awards. Uh, I mean, your last film, uh, which uh, I really loved the other film. Uh, we are, uh, dear audience, we are talking here uh, about in another film of Julia. Uh, it's not Pendular I'm referring to. Uh, it was uh, titled uh, uh, Stories Only Exist When Remembered. It was in 2011, right? Yes. And uh, for that, uh, you won several Starting awards. 10, 10 years. 10 years, so, okay. Yes. Wow. But uh, but still, I, I just watched the film this morning and really loved the freshness of the film and the kind of nostalgic, uh, like it's like flipping your uh, uh, photo photographs, like your album, photo albums, family albums. So it's all it's very fresh for me. It was very fresh mm -hmm. for me, and it never looked very old. So it was beautiful. Yeah. And you also won the Fripiski uh, Prize. Uh, so. Uh, I don't know where to start this discussion. Let's uh, um, let's uh, let's talk about this um, for, for those who don't know, and also uh, to you. Um, I, I will I will uh, be very precise about uh, like certain uh, aspects of this discussion. I won't explore any of your films. I won't expose any of your films, and we won't talk about the film or the content. We won't 
I don't ask you why did you do that or why did you do this or why didn't you do that. It won't be like that. It would be I would try to understand your mindscape, how you explore this uh, project after project, and how do you like have your own um, indulgence with these projects and how these projects grow on you and how you grow into these projects. So to starting with you, I. Uh, as I was just telling you just before we started, uh, uh, I even though these two films, Pendular and uh, the stories, uh, this is a long title. I keep forgetting yes. what was the title. <laughs> uh, stories only exist and remember it. Yeah, stories only exist when it's remembered. Okay, so these two films are quite two different films, but I sense something. There's a legacy and there's a mark in between these two films. I don't know if you will agree or not. Um, and that is, uh, you have this tendency of playing with memories. You have a tendency of playing with, uh, I don't know, how, is it memory or not? But I, I read it as memory. Like uh, I read some, like you are always uh, trying to um, like uh, explore these memories by yourself. So I would love to read more from you, like how this memory, how your experiences play on your scripts and the, uh, the projects you take up. How do you... How do you endeavor you with memories or deal with your memories before getting into pendulum? I, I, I don't know if it's uh, a subject of memories. Um, where I think it somehow uh, attached uh, the three films, because I'm just finishing right now, I'm in post production of a fiction film right now. Mm -hmm. And I did also two documentaries, and somehow mm -hmm. I think all the uh, in all five films, mm -hmm. uh, there's something that I'm always looking for, mm -hmm. which is somehow like the difference between society and individual, mm -hmm. uh, and the limit between society and individual. So somehow how far uh, a society can demand something from the individual and the opposite also okay. how far okay. an individual can demand so i i think history and memory uh -huh. are together with this idea i mean okay and history and memory somehow especially in found memories especially in, in stories uh -huh. on and remember uh, it's there uh, it, it's somehow something that is a fact. It's uh -huh. uh, it's it's not uh, the post narrative thing. It's not at all. But at the same time, you do have a control uh -huh. of the way you want to do the narrative, right? Uh -huh. The way you want to postpone the history. Uh -huh. uh, and I think that. I'm quite interested in understand just uh, the difference between the facts itself and the way we choose to to tell this the facts, the way we choose to to postpone for forever. So, so I don't know if I, I reply you, but I think memory and history are somehow together in this lunch. In this combination of uh -huh. narrative and fact. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. No, let me let me uh, uh, help you with the contextualizing in terms of your film. Sure. Um, uh, since uh, the film I referred, other than Pendular, uh, um, stories does not exist until we remember. It, what I, I keep messing that uh, this is a long title. I will go for yes. the uh, I will go for the uh, short one. There is another short title which is called Found Memories of the same film. So uh, let's uh, talk about uh, and that that Found Memories film is already uh, one can watch the film in online and one can um, it is available. So I'm referring to the film, uh, guessing that anyone is interested can explore the film and watch the film also. So uh, I I would love to listen a little in, in context what you just said about individual and society in context of your projects like why wh what made you start found memories uh, and from found memories how did you reach to pendulum so 
can you elaborate a little? We were talking this, you had this interesting uh, stories you shared earlier uh, last week. So I would love to explore those again. Uh, as I told you, I, I started working in cinema uh, when I was 16. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I went to do designer mm -hmm. in school. Especially yeah, because... Yeah, you went to study in design, yeah. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And especially because uh, I was looking for a very good uh, school of photography and art. And the okay. industrial design in Brazil, especially in Rio de Janeiro, uh, in the Federal University, it is... Uh, inside the Boza. So I went to this school looking for methodologies and looking for visual mm -hmm. context and visual histories. When okay. I left the school, I was mm -hmm. not so sure if I was going to the visual art or to cinema. Mm -hmm. uh, and I mm -hmm. had this idea because in 1999, I was doing a film of my mother, uh, Brava Gente Brasileira, Brave New Land. And the film was shot in a fort, in a military fort. And in this fort, there was a cemetery, but the cemetery mm -hmm. was closed. Okay. And nobody could die, uh, could be buried in the village where they lived. So if they, they die, they would have to, to be buried like seven hours uh, far. So even I though they had to, a cemetery in the village, yeah, they had to yeah. bury the dead uh, like quite far away. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Interesting. Seven hours away. Okay. That boat. from there you picked up the idea of cemetery from fond memory. Exactly. Exactly. From that, wow. I decided to 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 write a, a story about a woman who was willing to die and who could not die because mm -hmm. the cemetery was closed. And then I started okay. writing the script. I went to many uh, uh, labs, which was quite important for me for, for the process of development of the film. And how, how long did it take? How long did it take to write this uh, found memories? How long did you? How how much time did you spend behind the found memories script? The whole process between the first idea and the release was twelve years. 12 years yes wow but i would and say how, that how many how many drafts you did you have i want the audience I mean, to listen to this how many drafts you had how many versions of the script i never do i never know how how to count it because every day i was changing something so i i would put the 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 date okay in the script so i probably if you if look for how many dates i have that would be like 200, I don't know. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> when you think about how many versions, in the sense that how many mm -hmm. huge modifications the, the script had, I would say at least like 10, 15. You know, I, I had a motive behind asking you this because uh, I feel very shy about explaining my films. I just finished shooting uh, just before COVID, uh, one film. and. Now, after talking to you, I'm, I'm kind of uh, relieved to share that it took me almost 14 years to like, and I kept on writing. I never said that uh, this to anyone. Like I always keep saying like, you know, I started writing the first draft in 2011, but actually I started processing the films in 2005 and I shot the film in 2019. And that was yeah. the seventh draft officially, but unofficially it would be more than 40 drafts. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's so similar. Thank you so much for sharing that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, from uh, found memories, um, you had uh, quite a quite a leap, I, I would say like uh, the legacy is still there in Pendular, but the Pendular is such a completely different like space and premise, the premise of the film. like. If I talk about uh, found memories, it's about a little um, outer world. And uh, if I talk about pendular, it is more about inner world. So yes. how did you, how did you came to this? Like, uh, uh, why did you make this film? How did you come to this point? Like, 
I think there's two, two answers for you. Uh, one is more like artistic in the sense that I think my, my trajectory, you may say that I'm coming from visual art to cinema, mm -hmm. to narrative. So this next film, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and maybe I will go back, mm -hmm. I'll probably go back, but this next film I'm, okay. I'm, just, I'm just editing right now, it's quite narrative. Mm -hmm. It's like very, very classical in many, in many sense. Mm -hmm including the way I shot the film. Hmm. You mean Pendular? No, I mean the next one. The next Route one, okay. Yes, okay. yes. Okay. I think Pendular is somehow in the middle of this process. Uh, but but my interest form. was how did you land it to this idea of Pendular? How did you... So, so it's the second answer. The second answer is about the subject itself. Uh, I was just finishing Fun Memories, mm -hmm. uh, and I was re uh, releasing it in the festivals when mm -hmm. I started a relationship with Matias Mariani, who is my mm -hmm. husband right now. Okay. Uh, and we came from a very different backgrounds. Okay. Uh, and we we're completely in love, but at the end, we admire one, one to the other very much. But at the same time, there was something that we couldn't cross. There was something, there, there was like a, a layer mm -hmm. that we could never cross. And you were always not saying something in order to have a, this relationship more, in order to preserve the relationship, we choose silence. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. that, that was the mark of our relationship in the first like two years or uh, three. Mm -hmm. And I was just finishing fun memories. So I, I, I was the, the thing that I was looking and I was thinking about mm -hmm. was love relationship and silence. That's what okay. I was thinking about. Okay. So I decided to do a film about that, about a relationship that has always something in the mirror, they never mm -hmm. know exactly what, mm -hmm. and it's not they don't they don't trust each other, but they mm -hmm. kind of uh, decide to keep the silence in order to preserve the relationship, uh, and that means that they also don't know the history of each other. Mm -hmm. so, so can I conclude that you sure. actually uh, came to this premise by? Uh, like uh, exploring uh, uh, by uh, exploring your own uh, uh, journey? Is it like uh, you, you decided to explore your own experience? Uh, I mean, I did it more. Own, uh, okay. I did it more. I, ca I called Matthias to write with me. Okay. <laughs> oh, wow. That's so quite actually, courageous yes. of you. And so it's the film, very delicate also. As, uh, um, it's very delicate also, um, uh, to be very honest. Um, you know something, the film I was just referring to you, uh, I just finished, Iron Stream. In that uh, film, I actually asked my partner producer to write some of the scenes where I was actually exploring her journey. And I decided to adapt uh, like uh, kind of her way of looking at the things. But, it's very, it takes real courage to explore personal relationships in your own work. That's mm -hmm. really like, um, wow, that's a very courageous one. But um, uh, from there on, you two decided to write to each other. And uh, 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 I, I see some questions are coming up. Uh, what was your inspiration behind of making Pendular? And, and that is what exactly we are talking about here. Yes. Amit, we are just talking uh, to your query. So if you follow the query, uh, we are exactly answering the question. So Julia, coming back to your, so how you, you started uh, processing this uh, personal relationship into the script and the journey started of the script and how long from there on to, uh, to the screen? How, how long time, how many time, like how many years uh, did it took? I think the whole process was like something around seven years. Which and is, how did your which... relationship shaped in the seven years? A lot. Okay. A lot. Wow. And, and that's something that happens actually because we, we started writing the film mm -hmm. when it was very in the beginning of the relationship. Mm -hmm. 
So not only the relationship changed, but the mm -hmm. film changed also with the change of the relationship. Okay. Okay. Uh, and we we kind of uh, had tried to to bring these changes to the film. Of mm -hmm. course, it's not uh, a biographical <clears throat> film at all. No, of course that uh, we know. But uh, still, yeah. it's uh, if you are you are infusing your own personal experiences in the film, that's quite delicate to handle. Yes. And if it is like being close seven years with the partner, it's really delicate. But I I I have I read somewhere. And now uh, I, I just want to look at my notes. There was this uh, synopsis somewhere I read, a male sculptor and a female dancer find their relationship complicated by their rivalry and the desire to build a future together. So if that is the, like, uh, I was really intrigued by this, uh, like duality, rivalry and desire. And uh, th this was very interesting to read. And, I would, I would like to share a, a screen, um, a conversation from the film where I really find it very interesting. I will just share and I will read it. Um, uh, share. I can't share the screen. Host disable the participant screen sharing. I think we checked with Reza last time. I don't know if Reza is listening to me, please uh, enable sharing user. Okay, I will come back to... Uh, Reza, can you hear me? I, I can't share this screen, Reza. But we, uh, okay, now I can, yeah, okay. I will, uh, uh, can you see the screen, uh, Julia, from the film yes. screen? Okay. So it says, uh, when are you going to see something of yours? And then uh, there was this conversation, uh, no, it's not working. Anyway, there was this interesting conversation where uh, the critic friend, in one scene, he asked, when are you, when are we going to see something of yours? Like, meaning the exhibition, you haven't had an exhibition for quite some time. And the sculptor replies, you asking as a friend or critic? And the critic replies, both, I guess. And then the sculptor partner re replies, well, for the critic, I would say, I was working on something fantastic, a complete change, digging deeper in my roots. And the critics replies, okay, sounds good. And the dancing partner sitting beside her asks her, and for the friend, what would be your answer? The sculptor partner replies, for the friend, I would say, I didn't have the slightest idea what I was doing. So this, like what I'm doing, I didn't have slightest idea. This whole tension, like, uh, I, I, and, this rivalry and this desire and this tension, which is with almost no, like so minimalistic in the dialogue. So I, I, I had this uh, query in my mind, like, um, did you really had a clear idea when you were uh, working on the script? Did you, you, did you had the slightest idea where you are heading with the <laughs> script or you actually like, be, let's be honest, let's, we, we, are, we, are, we always put up these faces we pose to everyone like we know what we are writing, we know what we are directing. But to be very honest with you, I feel very scared most of the time on the set. Most of the time we're surrounded by like 50, 100 people and like uh, sitting there, I feel really scared. And everyone thinks that I'm, I'm really strong. But what about you? Like, did you have this idea what you're heading for? During the set, yes. Uh, okay. During the set, I usually, I'm quite mm -hmm. really, even mm -hmm. if I, 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 people give me many op options and I decide quite, quite fast, mm -hmm. but uh, you may not say the same during the script and the okay. editing, okay. which I think both of them are very difficult process mm -hmm. and they, they touch this feeling of having no idea of what we're doing. Okay. Uh, and especially because I mean, in this last film that I'm right finishing right now, it's is changed. But the other ones, uh, both Fond Memories and uh, Pendular, I started the film with ideas more than the narrative. Arc, yeah. The I idea. didn't have an arc. I didn't yeah. have a, a strong, strong personage, strong characters. Yeah. What I had was idea. I want to talk about the sculpture and a dancer, 
Mm -hmm. and, and especially I want to talk about equilibrium. I want to understand, uh, mm -hmm. to look at equilibrium as something that is, it's equilibrated because it has movement inside. Mm -hmm. It's equilibrated because someone is always in a relationship, uh, we are always uh, giving and receiving. And mm -hmm. that's what equilibrate the thing. Yeah. Uh, so I want to talk about that, you know, very conceptual ideas. Mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. I when I call Matthias to write the script with me, what I had was many conceptual ideas and two characters mm -hmm. that basically what I knew about them was the professions. And they have where from this desire and rivalry, these two came from? It was in the process of writing or it, it had you in your head? from the beginning, you were playing with this, both souls. Okay. I, th I think all the, the dichotomy mm -hmm. was from the beginning, uh, because okay. the whole film is about dichotomy, right? Dichotomy, the whole exactly. Film, the whole film is about something that looks like okay. a, a stone, and the other mm. one that looks like a movement. Mm. And and the, the way that we have to, to find if, to find the relationship between a stone and a movement, and a, and a stone and a movement, and uh, like enclosed in a closed space, nowhere mm -hmm. to go, and that's that mm -hmm. was really beautiful. You put you did not let them go out until the very end. It was they were this stone and the moving body. The two were like clogged in this space, and this so beautiful, this such a beautiful space you build within this like in in a small space. It was so like uh, intense and so less said but more more felt and that's the beauty so of that uh, that that's uh, that's fantastic. a bit funny because that's a bit funny because i i when i first called matthias to write the script the, one of the things that i told him mm -hmm. was i want to do a very mm -hmm. uh, low budget film with the minimum mm -hmm. crew possible only two characters mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. only one space I don't want to have anything more. And of course, Matthias started writing with me and he started having ideas. So he brought these huge sculptures and, and which was like one of those had 10 tones. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, and he brought like the, the, the friends and he brought this cable thing, right? The, the history the of the guy. Cable, yeah. yeah. The so, beauty of the cable, so, actually, in the film, you see the cable, you see this query, but you you deliberately did not continue the did, you did not give us the story, and I, I that's really beautiful for me. But what was your take? Why didn't you? So that's that, a process. In the middle of the, the script, we had the, mm -hmm. uh, the the whole sequence where she was going out and she was to look for the cable. Yes, looking for the cable, and she yeah. discovered everything because she was looking for the cable outside, etc. Uh, and there was it. It was an important part of the film. Mm -hmm. And we were in a lab with uh, a workshop with I just forgot his name. Shit, with a guy, very very interesting guy who actually was writing the script and said, "But why? Why do you go outside?" what is necessary about looking for the cable? What does it add to the film? So we you came mean, back uh, to the, the first idea. Friend. Sorry? You mean the illust uh, illustrator friend or, or you are talking about a mentor who, who is not- No, no, a mentor. A mentor who was in a- okay. No, no, a mentor yeah, who was in a mentor. film. Yes, okay. yes. And he, okay. he asked me that. Mm. And, and and so we came back to the, the original idea was, which was to do the whole film in one one city. In one I, one space. I haven't spoiled the film for the, the fresh audience who haven't watched the film since the film is still uh, accessible until uh, three uh, noon tomorrow, Bangladesh time. So, but um, this cable actually added a, a layer to the character of the sculpture who you didn't even name in the film. There is no name of the sculpture. Uh, and, uh, and of the dancer. And, and the, oh, uh, the dancer, you may say that it's Alice, right? Some yeah, Alice. You can say Alice. Yes. You can say Alice. Dancer is Alice. But the partner character, the lead, another lead character who does not have a name, that is, that is like very interesting. And uh, the cable adds a different layer to the secrecy. 
the secrecy dynam dynamics between this relationship and the character of the sculpture also. Like you continue to have this secrecy and uh, and their very strange relationship. And I I, I see another comment over here, um, a question actually. I, I will read the question first. I have another question. This is 18 plus content. So when a writer or visual like director want to execute for viewers, which need to be in their head. I think um, uh, I can sum up the question something like this. Um, the explicit uh, sexual acts that you utilized, uh, you exploited in this film time and again, and not in a very uh, film tradition way, but in a very more, uh, uh, giving or adding to the uh, discourse these two characters are having, like almost advancing the relationship, almost advancing the narrative without uh, without any narrative, and uh, and your exploitation of this sexuality. Uh, this since sexuality we cannot explore as a content in the South Asia for many social um, and cultural issues, and also some uh, restrictions we have. We can't uh, utilize that, but watching this film really intrigued me think uh, twice like uh, how why where from where you devised this idea to use sexuality as a language tool for the film and how did you manage that like how did you um, explore that um, uh, because you used probably three four times uh, the whole uh, process of sex and you really managed well not repeating the acts but also re adding to the tension so where from this idea came and how did you explore those uh, acts? Yeah, for me, a body is language in the sense that of uh, and, and cinema is about those kind of language. Mm -hmm. Cinema is specifically about the, the body language, right? The, the most, one of the most important things of, for the cinema is the body. Mm -hmm. uh, so in this film, there is two different, well, we may say three different layers of body. Mm -hmm. One is the dancer and mm -hmm. the whole thing about the dance, which we, we actually did a huge process, well, like one year process to create the scenes, the dance. Mm -hmm. uh, the body of the characters, mm -hmm. which we, all, we also talk about and decide what, dif what different ways they, they they talk and they 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 have the, the gesture, specifically mm -hmm. including because the dance, the idea of the dance was to use the gesture inside the mm -hmm. dance. So okay. it was to you to bring the gesture that they was doing mm -hmm. during the film to the dance they mm -hmm. were doing during the film, and to mm -hmm. have just two way baths. Uh, and the other layer is the sex. Uh, for me, sex is something in a relationship that us like cinema, uh, I mean, us like language, us like the conversation, us like many of different things about the relationship. Of sex is of one course. of those things that talks about the relationship itself. Of course, of course. And that's why I usually hate sex in cinema because usually sex in cinema Usually, of course, there are a lot of, uh, of exceptions, but objectified, usually, yeah, mostly objectified. It's more than objectified. It's also it doesn't matter, in the sense that the only thing that yeah. matters is that is mm. that the act itself. They did sex, so yeah. we, we may we, we may, may jump exactly. this. Yeah, we may jump the, yeah. the. It's almost like the way the, uh, on the old days when we went to go to to. To a fire to say that it's sex doesn't make much difference if you show or if you don't no, show exactly. if you don't really work and create and the sex itself and what it's talking about the relationship. So mm. for me it was very important to work in this the sex that was talking about the, the different aspects of the relationship, the different moments of the relationship, since it's a film mm. that it it takes like one year of the relationship, let's say. Uh, so the sex changed a lot during this whole year, mm. and I want to show exactly that. And you, you changed that. You, you also changed that. You devised with the uh, 
you did not repeat yourself but you changed the whole acts and you put that intensity more and more and you I, I can't explain in words uh, i will leave it to the audience to explain i don't know how did you write it how did you did you write anything about yes it? okay i wrote completely <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes, it was wow. That's to amazing yes. to know. Like it, it, I can't even devise the words. How, uh, I can explain the scenes, the way the scenes are done. But it is, you are so rightfully, it, it, these things are there. They don't actually come as acts of sex. They come as the narratives and the duration of this period, how the relationship is changing, how they are unfolding each other or like aggressing each other, more or less. But that's also something that the actors did and brought a lot. Okay. Okay. Uh, I mean, it was quite difficult for us to understand how to rehearse all the scenes. Yeah, because somehow it always looked like artificial. Hmm. But then what we basically did was to create a, an intimacy between uh, Rodrigo, which is uh, the character, Raquel and me. So basically what we did was to create trust and intimacy and confidence Okay. during a process of like three months. Mm -hmm. And then when we arrived to the set, mm -hmm. we actually look at each other and like with distrust and work with distrust and they, they gave a lot of freedom and, and, and they also had tried to, to get in love one to the other, not in love in a real sense because mm -hmm. I mean, no, I Rodrigo, is, mm. Rodrigo is gay, Raquel uh, had a marriage. It's not a, at all about that. But <laughs> somehow, like, to, to really admire and desire the other so they are able to do the scenes. That's amazing. You get getting those kind of actors who are ready to go that far and who are ready to add in so much. That's really lucky also. Yeah, it's really amazing. But... Uh, at the same time, these um, two words that you wrote, uh, you wrote uh, male sculptor and female dancer. Now I, now I wonder, was it very deliberate choice to like uh, voice the genders of the personas or in the synopsis or it was a, like a marketing or distributor's call or it was your decision? What, what, since you know wh where I'm coming from, this gender is so much overexploited now, and I it's like uh, like sometimes it gets really uh, people who are not even really uh, uh, aware of the gender balance. They they even keep telling gender. So this is very nowadays it's very like got really confusing. So, but why why did you put these words like male and Female. Why did you put these words? So I had no me, control on the synopsis. Were... Yes, uh, I had no control on the synopsis, so I, okay. I don't know exactly how to, to answer okay. that. But what I can answer you is mm -hmm. that when I start doing the film, mm -hmm. uh, which was something around 2011, mm -hmm. uh, 2010, 2011, I would start writing the film. Mm -hmm. uh, feminism and gender discussion was not at all something that was as up as it is right now. Okay. Uh, and the whole process of the shooting, mm -hmm. it, 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 it was a when I was shooting, it was exactly the moment where, in which this discussion was getting, uh, getting forced, getting, getting stronger in Brazil. Mm. Uh, so, what I realized when I was releasing the film was that I have done a feminist film. But that's, I only realized that during the re release of the film, mm. and basically because it's somehow feminist when you, when you put yeah, of course. a woman, a woman of course, strong, of course. a stronger woman with, her, with control of her own path. Mm -hmm. uh, so actually, what what there is from gender in the film mm. was completely not controlled in the sense that I didn't understand that politically. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's true that uh, I always intend to have a film about a strong woman because the, those it is are not only I, you. I, 
uh, Julia, it is even um, uh, I, I, the film I was talking to you about. Actually, the four features uh, I finished shooting, and the three is still awaiting to be released. Uh, uh, out of those four, three has leading central women characters, and I I am personally obsessed with women characters, and I think women are don't need to be they don't need to be feminist. They are stronger than men. That is my con my take. I have no confusion about that. So, but uh, I just I just felt like asking you why this male and female because like for me it was dis uh, injustice to the to the uh, like content because the film is so strong, and this I don't see uh, the dancer as a woman. I see her as a persona. I don't see the sculptor as a man. I see her as a partner. So it was so yeah, but this. But at the same time, the film is about dualities, right? Yeah, the duality. film is yeah. about it is about the fact that it's a dance and a sculpture, which mm. seems to be two opposite mm. aspects. Mm. So it makes sense that it's not two guys, not two women. It's it, it makes sense to have two different genders exactly. occupying. Those. Okay, now yeah, yeah, that that's another dimension. Yeah. It's like uh, two opposite dimensions. They are actually creating yeah. the tension in the center. Yeah, and that's really beautiful. So now it, that pushes me to ask the third, like, what is your third film? The next film that you are just making. So can you give us some spoiler or give us some clue where you are heading? Or I may, but I don't think it's it will be allowed in. Okay. Uh, yeah, you mean in film... Brazil? It won't be allowed in, in, in Brazil. Brazil maybe on this next in this moment that we have in politically in Brazil, it's getting quite difficult. But uh, the film is about a woman, mm -hmm. a black woman, mm -hmm. uh, who just got into uh, how do you call it? Niche? Uh, defense? It's not defense court. It's like uh, she 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 was she is she was in the law. But she defends the, 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 how do you call it? When she defends someone uh, publicly. A public defender, uh -huh. can it be? Okay, public prosecutor. But it can be, okay. Public prosecutor, you mean? But prosecutor is not the one that is, is, is uh, prosecuting someone. Uh, I mean, the, the, what she does you mean is the activist, to defend... social activist? Uh... No, no, she's from the government. I mean, she is, she's, uh, she was hired uh, to defend uh, during the law. She is an attorney oh, and, she's attorney. Hired to, okay. and she's hired to defend people in Brazil. I mean, okay, public prosecutor, basically, PPE. Okay. 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 So she she had just got in, mm -hmm. uh, but she spent like the last eighty years studying, mm -hmm. and to pay this for studies, she used to do like sex tapes, like sex uh, chats. Okay. Online okay. sex. Okay. Uh, okay. So she got in the the law thing. And uh, Julia, started... don't give up the yes. story. Don't give up the story. I won't, Don't give I won't. up the story. Save the story. Save the story. But I would, I would love to hear more about how did you reach to the third film? Like your every film has its own journey. You are reaching from one film to another film. So what took you to your third film? Let's not uh, give away that storyline. Let's how how you from uh, found uh, uh, found memories to uh, Pendular to uh, this third one. How did you reach to the third film from Pendular? I think it is uh, it's a follow after Pendular in the sense that it is about thinking about sex and how to shoot sex. Okay. Uh, I am someone who used to have like a huge uh, who, who for me sex was quite important during my my it was some it, it was a character characteristic for me that was quite important. Mm -hmm. uh, so I want to talk about a woman who desire mm -hmm. and I, I wanted to talk about moral. Okay. The morality of the society. Morality of, yeah, okay. So basically the ethical boundary what I, of the society, yeah. 
So basically what I choose was uh, something that I myself was had morality against. So it is a film about a woman who desire violence, who discovers she desire violence in the sex, which is something okay. that for me was quite difficult to understand. So, so I actually did decide to, cho to, to choose a subject that was quite difficult for me to understand and then to actually had to improve my morality. Okay. Now this morality issue and the social issue, when you were just saying in the very beginning that you are not sure this film will be getting released. And it sounds so familiar everywhere in the world nowadays, even like we always in, in Dhaka, in India, in Pakistan, Sri Lanka, or even every part of the world, more and more, I think um, the states are states and the society are becoming less resistant. Do you think so? less tolerant do you think so they're, they're less resistant tolerant to ideas tolerant to voices tolerant to like uh, dissents do you think so are we are we gradually going back all over the because you were saying that you're not sure um, you will be able to release the new film and i'm sure that i won't be able to release your uh, pendular here in dhaka no way forget it so where are we heading? Okay, I, I, I really think we are now in a moment in the society, in the moment of the world, that something's going to happen. It may be good. I don't think it's necessarily bad. Maybe. I think maybe uh, it's something that it will, because at the same time, we have like the trans movement that is very strong. Exactly, and we have we have even this gender and the anti-racism movements that are quite strong right now, and they bring and they make us to re-understand the world like like a new uh, epistemology, you know. Mm. And I think that may be really fantastic, mm. but it also can have, and what right now in Brazil what seems to happen is that we are going to the opposite. We are going, we have, we are having like a counter revolution from this whole opening thing. And actually everything is going well down. But I hope- Trust me, it is not only in Brazil, it is everywhere, every part of the world. And yeah. uh, it is in such a way that uh, I'm not very comfortable to talk about it on live also. It is that mm -hmm. uncomfortable for everyone. Like even us, we have this, so much uh, limitations to talk that I'm not sure that how far I can ask you because I can't have a very open discussion with you even on this live. I feel kind of always pulled back by certain laws and certain discriminations that is going around. And that is very frustrating. But at the same time, I, I would love to ask the uh, I, I would love to repeat a question that I asked in the first episode of this uh, Balinale Spotlight WCF uh, film series. Uh, last month I had this uh, uh, talk with Tamer Al Said from Egypt, uh, Egyptian filmmaker. Uh, uh, and I asked him, uh, and I will repeat the question for you also. Uh, what do you think this last two decades uh, that we experienced with so much uh, uh, social uh, changes, not only social changes, but also the digital ex experience, the way the whole audiovisual experience has transformed in terms of uh, um, online, in terms of YouTube. And I'm not, I'm not talking about the mediums only. I'm talking about uh, the kind of culture, like people uh, going back home uh, in the car, they keep scrolling the Facebook timeline. And that is their audiovisual experience also. People, someone who's just sitting on the door and browsing a YouTube video, that is their audiovisual experience. So the, the kind of classic films that uh, we grew up watching, the kind of film that you made from memories and also Pendular, which requires a big screen, which requires a theater uh, for proper collective experience. So what do you think where we are heading in down 10 years or down 20 years, where are we heading? I have no idea. I think we're definitely in a moment that of break. Uh, 
and I don't know that if that means that history will will not matter anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, history won't matter anymore. Okay. If facts will not matter anymore because of the post uh, uh, post concept or right, like the whole idea of the, you don't have a post uh, how do you call it in English post, post holocaust post holocaust yes. Mm -hmm. So I really don't know if that means that nothing will be considered truth because we will have lots of uh, phenomena and not, <laughs> not the things itself. One truth, or, yeah, there is no one truth. And or, myth, myth, myths about truth. Yeah, but at the same time, it can be the change. I mean, it's definitely going to have a completely change about the way we look to things and to the history and to the facts. Mm. I just don't know to which, to which direction it will be. What I'm sure is that I will have lots of difficulties to understand the mind of my daughters. Mm. Because I think they will be uh, created in a society so different from mine that it will be quite different to really understand what the, their feelings and their thoughts. Mm. You're so right and so like, um, sad this to be discussed. Yeah, we are discussing very sad. In, but uh, we are about to wrap the discussion, but uh, we just got an interesting question from uh, uh, audience Nazneen Noor who wrote, how did the director treat the mood of the emptiness, of emptiness? Actually, I think we already kind of uh, touched that area. And uh, I would suggest uh, to Noor and all the viewers to watch not only Pendular, that, that is only available until uh, tomorrow 3 in the noon uh, here in Bangladesh time, but uh, also to watch uh, the other film, Found Memories, which is available online and YouTube. You can browse and check out the film of uh, Julia Murat. Uh, uh, and I think uh, if you watch these two films together, you will have a completely um, uplifted vision about Julia and how he, she sees the world. Thank you, Julia. Uh, Thank it you was very um, uh, nice talking to you. Hope we will continue yeah. uh, getting more beautiful films from you. And mm -hmm. um, we will continue this talk uh, maybe in some different places and different corners. I wish yeah, the festival so. seasons were up again. We were free of COVID, but until then, we have to be locked on these screens. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you, um, uh, Gote. Thank you, Sara Afrin and Vincenzo for curating such a beautiful program. Thank you, all the partners all around South Asia. Thank you, Yulia. Bye-bye. Thank you very much, Kamal. Thank you. Bye-bye.